What's up guys, Chris here with Rooted. I'm so excited today to talk to you about how to play bass in a worship band setting. It's really an idea that's near and dear to my heart because I've played bass with many worship bands over the years. I played with Chris Tomlin, Christy Knuckles, Passion, and several other bands and organizations. I absolutely love doing it. It's, um, it's an instrument I love just like piano. Um, and I, I'm excited to share with other bass players that I feel like bass players kind of get neglected a little bit in terms of the overall scheme of uh, musicians and instrumentalists. Um, a lot of times if you play bass, you probably played because of a need, like, you know, you may have started out playing guitar or drums, or maybe you never played music before and your church or your friends were like, hey, we need a bass player. Can you, surely you can play one note at a time and make that work, right? Um, or maybe you were a guitar player or a piano player before and you just couldn't cut it. Um, and they, somebody else was like, hey, let's have you play bass. Let's have you start doing that, right? A lot of times it comes out of a need or because you just can't do something else. Um, for me, it came, it derived out of a need. I started playing piano when I was first getting going in music. And over time, uh, I found out that there was a need for a bass player at my church. And so I started practicing and learning to play that. And that's how I really developed a love for it. I love bass now. I love what you can play. I love that it's the foundation of the band. I just love the sound, uh, ultimately, and I love what you can do on it. And so today, as I talk to you, I'm so pumped because I, I know that a lot of times you're neglected. A lot of times people don't much put much focus or emphasis on you as a player, but ultimately you have such a big role in a band setting. That's what I want to talk to you about today. Um, as a bass player, you and the drummer are one of the most important parts of the band. Go ahead and celebrate because you're not going to hear it very much. Um, the bass player is so important to the role of, of, of any band and to have the sound of any band. All right. So as a bass player, you're the, the bass is the foundation of a band and the drummer uh, is as well. So when you put bass and drums together, if you guys are playing tight with one another, meaning in sync, um, right in step with one another, the rest of the band has the opportunity to sound incredible. If the bass and drums are not in step with one another, the rest of the band can't possibly sound good. There's just no way it'll happen. So a lot of it, a lot of a band's sound hinges on the bass and the drums. And a lot of it's stuff that you would never even recognize or really think too much about unless you're really clued in to what's going on in a specific song or to a specific band, okay? But today, what I wanna share with you are just a few things, three things, that I feel like really set bass players apart uh, who are really thinking about this stuff and who are really excelling and taking their playing to another level. So um, first thing I want to talk to you about today, step one is be simplistic in your playing. All right, simplistic playing. So whenever you uh, are, are looking at a song and whenever you're learning a song, let's, let's take the song Build My Life, for instance, and here's, here's what one version, uh, Christy Knuckles' version of Build My Life sounds like. Go ahead and take a listen. Okay, so you heard the song Build My Life. You heard the chorus of it. Very simple. You hear there's not a ton going on um, bass-wise, and that's a good thing. All the bass is doing right there is it's holding down the root note. And it's right in line with the kick drum. The kick is doing what's called four on the floor, one beat at a time. I'm not doing any kind of crazy rhythm. Okay, so bass players following that. They're just moving between the chord changes, following the rhythm exactly with the kick drum, okay? And that sounds really tight. It feels really full. That's what that song needs, right? That's a very simplistic uh, way of, of thinking about it, but it's a really um, good way of thinking about how to play bass. You want to be simple, and simple a lot of times is very effective, okay? So stay simple with your playing. Don't try and go crazy. A lot of times, a lot of people will... Uh, try and go outside of what they're able to do and they'll end up messing up because they're trying to do something ridiculously crazy and they're just not equipped to do it yet or not prepared to do it. Um, stay within yourself as a player. Um, 
you know, you want to you want to pick your spots well. You want to you want to be tasteful and simplistic. It doesn't mean you can't ever divert from the root note. It doesn't mean you always have to play the root note and you can't ever change anything. Like like if it were me and I'm getting to maybe the second or third chorus of the song where things are building a little bit more, maybe I'm playing real simple here. And we're going here then to the one. And I might throw a quick three in there before the six. <clears throat> a lot of it depends on the drummer too, or I might throw something quick like that before we hit the one again okay so uh, a lot of it does depend on what the drums do and and the dynamic of the band in the moment um, a lot of times you can kind of predict that like chorus one won't be your biggest chorus two or chorus three will be bigger in nature dynamically and so you want to save what you're going to do uh, that's going to add more of a dynamic which is what that does throwing in those extra notes um, until a little bit later when things are going to be bigger. You don't want to just shoot all of your bullets out after chorus one and have nothing left in the chamber. You want to give it time. You want to let the song build and not take away from it. Okay, so be simple, be simplistic in your playing and be what the song needs. Okay, all right, step number two, item number two I want to talk to you about today is sync up with the drummer's kick pedal. Okay, this is such a massive thing. All right, whenever you're playing... Uh, any kind of music, it really doesn't matter, but specifically in worship music, you really, as a bass player, you want to be so in tune and so in line with the drummer's kick pedal. It's, it's crazy. If they're doing four on the floor, you want to make sure that you're hitting right smack in the beat of that kick pedal, okay? So um, when what I mean by that is you can think, okay, yeah, I'm playing on beat. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm right in line with the kick drum. It's great. But there's an ability to be a little bit on the front end of the beat, to be right smack in the middle of the beat, or to be behind the beat, okay? And as a bass player, you don't want to be ahead of it. You don't want to be pushing the drummer to go faster. You don't want to be slowing the band down. You want to sit back in the tempo and just play right in the middle of that beat because the drummer can feel that and the rest of the band can feel that. You as a, as a bass player control the tempo of the band in a lot of ways. And if you're constantly pushing the click and pushing the, the kick um, to go faster and you're on the front end of that, of that beat, of every single beat, then you're gonna push your band to go faster. And you may end up getting off click, getting off the tracks if you play with tracks and the click. And you're just gonna push your other musicians to go faster when maybe they're not prepared to do that. And so you as a bass player have a lot to do with the overall tempo and the, and the tightness. And so if you're just a hair faster than the rest of the band, just it, it's almost like a flam that happens. You're playing and then the kick's playing and the guitar's strumming on what they're doing and the singer's getting where they need to go, right? And so to be really tight, really in sync as a band, you really want to make sure that if you have a click going in your ears or if you're just trying to fall in line with the kick drum, you're right smack in the middle of whatever that kick drum's doing. You're not on the front end, you're not on the back end. You're, you're just um, getting as tight as you possibly can um, with that kick drum. And a lot of that has to do with your eyesight and the, your positioning with the drummer. You know, a lot of bands will put the bass player next to the drummer uh, in a band setting because they need to be the most connected. Um, a lot of times I'll turn towards a drummer and just look at what they're doing or I'll do something and drummers and bass players, you know, really good ones can start to read each other a little bit. Even if you don't have a lot of experience playing with one another, you can start to read or feel where they might be going or some kind of fill that they might be doing. So if they're going to do a fill, then that allows you to do a, a, something extra, a fill in between chords, right? Or maybe you turn and show them something that you're doing, like you're, you're building, maybe you're going from quarter notes to eighth notes and you're trying to build you know that next section up into this next release and you want them to come on board with you so you turn towards them there's just a lot of communicating you can do that's verbal and nonverbal in the context of a band setting and even within a song that really helped bass players and drummers be on the same page but that's something that's massive you want to be on the same page as your drummer if you're a bass player, okay? And then step number three, you wanna watch your dynamics. And so we've talked about this a little bit before, <clears throat> the little things, watching your dynamics are massive, okay? Um, whenever you get to um, the end part of a song, you're probably gonna be playing more rhythms and a little, maybe more notes in between chords than you ever have before in that song. Um, if, if you're starting a song out, you're not gonna be the most crazy, loud, um, rhythm, rhythmic, or even um, 
just crazy in your note playing. You're going to be very simple and chilled out as far as what you're playing in the beginning of a song. And as a song builds, that's when you're going to give more to it, right? And so um, ways to do that are uh, to go up an octave potentially. So if I wanted to play that chorus again of Build My Life, this is certainly one way of doing it. And then if, and if we're going to take it up a notch, So what I was doing there was just doing a lot of octave movements, right? Going from the four here, and then walking back to, to the two, and then the lower octave, and then the one, up to the three, six, high six there, okay? And that's not like crazy stuff. It's not super hard stuff to do. It's just octave movements. And that's that's what I'm going to do if I'm in a position uh, in the song where the drums are kind of given more. They're taking the dynamic level up in the song because I want to match that. I want to help bring the, di di the dynamic level of the song up another notch if that's where the band is going. If we're trying to be more chill and more calm about it, I might just play this simple right here. If this was one of the earlier choruses or maybe a last down chorus. You know, that's all I'm going to do right there. Stay real simple, be a little bit higher up on the neck and be real chill. But if I'm trying to build the song and really get it, uh, you know, louder and more dynamic in nature, louder isn't really the best term for it, but just more dynamic and really bring some more energy to the song, then I'm going to do some of those octave things. I'm going to, I'm, instead of being quarter notes, I'm going to be eighth notes going here and really driving it, okay? And what, what a good drummer will do then is they'll follow you and they'll start doing more on the toms or more with the kick and they'll really help you build a dynamic as well. And so as a bass player, the dynamics make such a big difference and such a big impact on what you do. Anybody can play four notes in a row back to back without being smooth or without being good with it. But when you really think about all these different aspects, being simple, <clears throat> playing in line with the kick drum, and watching your dynamics, it completely changes the game because then you now have purpose behind what you're doing. You're not just playing any old D on the guitar, any old G, because you just want to get through the song. You're playing something that is so needed and so specific for that part of the song that you really couldn't imagine playing it anywhere else and playing it any other way because you know that what you just did there in that moment for that song is so necessary and so important and exactly what that song needs, okay? So that's what you want to think about as a bass player. You want to be thinking, I know I'm doing simple stuff over here, but the little things are so important. The dynamics of how I play in relation to where we are in the song makes such a big difference whenever you're playing in a band setting and specifically worship band setting. So to recap, Whenever you're playing bass in a worship band setting, you really want to make sure that you're playing simplistic, you're playing what the song needs. You want to make sure that you're locking in with the kick drum always and being really tight with that drummer, with that kick pedal. And then thirdly, you want to make sure that you're really playing dynamically. You're playing exactly what you need to play in any given section of the song. You're not just playing the same four notes over and over because you know those notes like the back of your hand. You want to be playing more, giving more rhythm uh, to the actual song, to a certain section of the song. You want to be playing um, louder or softer given the certain section. And you want to be playing up and down the neck based on certain sections of the song. All that matters and all that comes into play. And it's stuff that as you get more uh, used to playing bass and more used to playing in a band setting, you can start to predict because a lot of worship songs, a lot of songs in general, follow a very similar template, right? You start a little bit softer, then you come in and get bigger and bigger and bigger through chorus two, and then you maybe you drop down for a bridge and you build it up. Then you do a big chorus three, and then maybe you do a big outro, or you fall back down to do an, uh, a down chorus or something like that at the end. So you can start kind of predicting some of these waves of dynamics and start adjusting your playing to those waves. So I hope you really uh, took a lot from today. I hope this helps you in your playing. Um, in your next worship opportunity, please take these three pieces and start uh, just melding them into the way that you play. I promise it's going to make a massive difference in the way that you play and the way that your band sounds. Because as a bass player, you have all the ability in the world to chart the course of, of the way your band sounds, you and the drummer. 
have all the opportunity and all the ability in the world to make your band sound phenomenal. So I hope you take me up on that. I hope you really try these three aspects. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. I'd love to engage with you. Just help you think further about playing bass in a worship band setting. All right, y'all have a great week. Talk to you soon.